Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blockchain Central. Our today's episode is a final one in our short series called Obstacles to Adoption. Governance is on the agenda today. Before we start, please be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And check out our Medium blog at medium.com backslash block essence. See the link in the description box for details. One can argue that governance has been a polarizing issue for as long as humans had social structures. Over the centuries, wars were fought over the best ways to organize and manage societies. Later, when big private business emerged, it also redefined how different governance methods can dictate the success or failure of an enterprise. In those two words, success and failure are key to understanding the challenges connected to managing any complex system. It is interesting to note that, just like the natural selection, governance systems that are sustainable tend to survive, and the ones that are not, disappear. Before we start analyzing the impact of governance on the operation of various blockchains, we have to make two important points. First of all, any and all governance pertains to dynamic systems. If a system is completely static and no change is introduced, governance is not required. Second of all, all the points we're making refer to public blockchains. Private ones can be regulated however their owners choose. A typical public blockchain has the following four stakeholders, developers, node operators, token holders, and the blockchain team. These four entities operate within three main areas of activity. First of all, the consensus mechanism decides how the nodes agree with each other and add new blocks to the chain. Second of all, there is the issue of funding. Someone has to decide how the money is distributed in the network and within the organization. And finally, we have the project governance which pertains to everything else, from marketing and PR, through legal compliance, to strategic changes made to the blockchain. A good example is Ethereum, where the developers and the team have to decide which consensus method would work best in the long run. Some time ago, the Ethereum Foundation decided to switch from a proof-of-work consensus mechanism to a proof-of-stake. The developers are currently working on implementing this fundamental change. Node operators on some blockchains hold the right to veto. They can simply choose not to operate the nodes. This way, they have passive influence over many decisions. Token holders, on the other hand, control the financial aspect of the traditional crypto blockchain. They can elect to buy or sell their coins, thereby influencing the price. We decided to bring up governance as the third big obstacle to adoption, as it can have significant influence over all the other factors contributing to DLT success. One obvious example is scalability. A metaphor that is frequently used by blockchain contributors when talking about scalability and governance is the example of a group of five people deciding on what restaurant to go to. There is, after all, a reason why bigger restaurant outings such as corporate functions are usually arranged in an authoritarian rather than a democratic manner. And talking about democracy, it is said that the user limit for a direct democracy in which all participants have an equal stake is somewhere around 30,000 right around the number of citizens eligible to vote in the ancient city of Athens. Another important aspect of blockchain development that depends strongly on the governance model is compliance. With more and more requirements for regulatory oversight, sometimes a need for a quick and sometimes unpopular decision arises. Another key area is volatility and market confidence. Although a blockchain is frequently described as immutable, it is the case as long as its human creators decide not to intervene. This immediately brings up the issue of hard forks. When talking about cryptocurrency, any time a hard fork happens, the price ends up fluctuating. Since volatility is one of the key criticisms levied against crypto, the constant risk of a fork can serve as a major obstacle to widespread adoption. The last issue we should discuss is the matter of authority. A great case study for that could be the profile of Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum. Vitalik himself is very open about the fact that his authority can be more of a hindrance than a benefit to Ethereum. To put it simply, a truly decentralized system cannot exist if it depends on the decisions of a single person. This issue is central to the discussion of merits of the two leading cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Some people argue that the more leaderless Bitcoin environment is better for the industry, while others claim that it complicates regulatory compliance and could potentially lead to more hard forks. Whatever your opinion is, it goes without saying that the human component is still a very prominent part of blockchain governance. Let's talk about solutions. Two fundamentally different governance models are frequently quoted as the way ahead of DLTs. These are off-chain and on-chain governance. Off-chain governance is similar to a standard management model. 
Off-chain means that the decision process is happening outside of the blockchain and the underlying code. Here, a group of stakeholders makes crucial decisions pertaining to the technology. It is not that different to how checks and balances govern the legislation of the United States. Examples of that type of governance are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Both platforms use a formal improvement protocols. Bitcoin Improvement Proposals BIPs, or Ethereum Improvement Proposals EIPs, where developers can suggest changes. The changes are then approved or rejected via community feedback. Core developers need to figure out if the node operators and miners will agree to upgrade their software before they implement the changes. It all works well as long as there's consensus within the community. If there's disagreement, the stakeholders can either negotiate further or go ahead and initiate a hard fork, which, as we know, has already happened in the past. The fundamental advantage for off-chain governance is that it works. Bitcoin and Ethereum continue being the most prominent cryptocurrencies and have been effectively navigating the treacherous waters of community dissent. There are, of course, certain drawbacks to this system of governance. The first criticism is that control remains relatively centralized and largely excludes mainstream users who lack technical knowledge or leverage to influence key decisions. Another possible issue is the fact that, just like in representative democracies, making important decisions can take a long time. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have the concept of on-chain governance. It is based on the idea that in transparent, distributed, and immutable system, participants should be able to directly vote on all matters. That is why on-chain governance aims to transfer incentive from miners, developers, and node operators to the users. A good example of blockchain that aims to be governed on an on-chain basis is Tezo. The project advertises itself as a truly leaderless smart contract platform. The design behind Tezos is that the users are allowed to vote on everything, including chain rewrites. The proof of stake protocol means users who hold fewer tokens can't have a substantial impact on the decisions. This can effectively lead to accumulation of power in the hands of the wealthy. To prevent that, Tezos users can also delegate their votes to others which is similar to a representative democracy and departs slightly from a direct democracy made possible by on-chain governance. We should mention here that Tezos has also been surrounded by multiple controversies, including a delay in issuing coins to the ICO participants and a lack of clarity on how ICO money will be used. There were also some internal conflicts, resulting in the board being reorganized with new members. All in all, on-chain governance aims to truly distribute and decentralize voting power, the two words that make every blockchain enthusiast happy. If we add smart contracts and complete governance automation to the picture, we can also achieve a much faster decision-making process. While this all sounds very interesting, there are some very vocal opponents to the concept of on-chain governance. One of those opponents is Vlad Zamfir, one of the members of the Ethereum Foundation, Vlad is strongly against the idea of governance as a purely designed problem. In his opinion, any process that imposes software updates on node operators is essentially risky and possibly unsustainable. From our point of view here at Blockchain Central, other issues with on-chain governance include regulatory compliance and ethical decision-making. Because legislation systems are not yet automated, they frequently rely on interpretations or precedents. Compliance with such systems might still be prohibitively difficult to implement into a self-governing protocol. Exploring the issues of blockchain governance is extremely satisfying and, in a weird way, inspirational. So we encourage you to do more research. We'll link our sources in the description below. Are you a fan of traditional and clearly effective off-chain model or experimental and possibly disruptive on-chain governance? Let us know in the comments. Before you go, Please note that this content does not represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog. The link is in the description below. See you in the next one.